Hey guys, it's Summing Rush. For this video, you're going to be watching me demonstrate the process that Unicom's use to get better at World of Tanks. Now, this is the process that I've used for years and years. I don't really demonstrate it when I'm live streaming because it's like when I'm live streaming, I've got a show to put on. But basically what happened in this replay, the context of the video was such that I wanted to make a live game uh, for my viewers to see. Obviously, I was recording the game live. I wanted to try to get a carry talk about exactly what I was doing and why. And towards the end of the game, it gets to this really close situation where we get into a three on three and I end up making a mistake. Now, in this video, you're going to see the exact process that a good player uses. Like, basically, it just demonstrates the whole thing. If you're trying to get better at World of Tanks, if you're trying to increase your carry potential or trying to join a better clan and trying to improve your stats or get better at grinding and so on and so forth, um, this is the process that Unicom's use to try to achieve those goals. So if that's the type of video you're into, this is it. The title is not going to apply directly for the first couple minutes, but you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when it gets to the end. So um, yeah, enjoy. <laughs> All right, we're in Abbey. Uh, this is one of the best scouting maps in the game. There's a reason you see tons of people getting 10k spotting damage games on it. That's sarcasm, by the way. This this map blows for light tanks, man. It's basically a heavy tank map. You've got three corridors. Like, you can literally see the three corridors. There's a corridor here, there's a corridor here, and there's a corridor here. So, um, for light tanks, this map is awful if you're trying to scout. Now, the beautiful thing about playing diverse like light tanks with guns is you can actually move around and like shoot people in the sides and stuff like that. So, typically, the way that's done on a map like this is by positioning yourself in the middle because from the middle, you can shoot at the nine line and the two line. And, you know, obviously, that's really, really useful. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to control the mid. And I think I'll be able to do that because I don't really have many light tanks, if at all. Like, it's just the fucking... What the hell? How do you climb up here? It's just the 1390 that I have to worry about. Maybe the T40. Like if I'm fighting the T44, it'll be a fair. F I'll win, but it, won't, it might not be worth the hit points. Really? They blocked this off. Okay. So I guess I can't do that. That's going to change things because I didn't. <laughs> I used to be able to just climb up there, right? Generally, if you take the middle, A, you want to have teammates with you, which I don't. And B, you don't really want to drive in front of the camping TDs who are going to be sitting back here who have a line of sight on that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is I don't know if they've brought anyone to the mid just yet. I'm going to try to proxy swat them. There we go. <laughs> so they have the 44 in the mid. The question is, where's the 1390? So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to be aggressive until I figure out where any of... There's the 1390, right? So if I'd committed to the middle, I would have just been YOLO'd by an autoloader and I probably would have been really upset. So there's that. Now we'll see if he pokes on me. He probably won't because he probably sees that I'm aiming at him. But if he does, I can get the damage. I've done 400 spotting damage. So I can actually just try to continue to spot these guys. And if we do that, we might actually be able to win, you know, win this and then affect the fight on the two line because obviously I can affect the fight on the two line from this location. So the interesting thing here is the fact that we haven't pushed... What the fuck is this team doing? Jesus Christ. <laughs> how? How is this how? Okay, we're gonna lose the dine line, in my opinion, because we've got four campers and they're just gonna get farmed. See, the STRV just killed a Sama over here, or whatever it's, Somua, whatever the hell it's called. Uh, I imagine that STRV is just gonna farm them and we're gonna lose that side of the map because the STRV is gonna be able to farm them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna join the two line. Most people don't feel comfortable making plays like this in their lights, but it's really important because if you see that you're going to lose like one side of the map, which I might be wrong because we do have that SU-100 who's actually being aggressive, um, you want to try to win another side so you don't get surrounded. So what I'm going to try to do is pick fights with these heavies here. And that always works out well. The thing is, a lot of these heavies don't really have weak spots on their turrets that I can shoot at, and this thing isn't accurate enough in the first place, so it's not going to be worth it. Hmm. Okay, so I've went to this side. I'm deciding it's not going to be, you know, nothing's going to happen unless we have a type 4 who like pushes through and then I can use him to take hits, which it, is the type 4 pushing? Yeah, okay, let's go help this type 4 push because I don't really want to drive all the way back to back on the map to go shoot at like camping TDs and stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to try helping this type push uh, and we're going to have to be careful because when you push, you have to be careful for the 44 and the 1390 who are in the mid. Why are he... He can just drive forwards. He's <laughs> This guy's being defensive when he can just drive forwards, but it is what it is. I want to help with this push. Obviously, we're pushing into a crossfire, so driving into them is probably... Huh. It depends on how this team plays it, but if we drive into them, we'll just have to focus on the T10, basically. And that looks like exactly what, what's going to happen here. 
So given that I'm a light tank, I'm just going to be fire support right here. I want to give this foreign... The foreign six has basically killed himself, so this can happen, which is really useful. You know, it's going to win us this side of the map effectively. So he just sacrificed himself, which is brilliant. But we need to keep pushing through because, as I predicted, we've lost the other side of the map. And we need to... We're about to get surrounded if we don't push forwards. So the hope is that these heavies can just drive into these tier 8 heavies. Like, they're tier 9 heavies and we can just do that. But we'll see. We also have to be careful about these guys, right? So the reason we're pushing forwards is so we don't get flanked by these guys. And so we also don't get flanked by the other side of the map, which is kind of useful. I'm going to get focused down in a situation like this because I'm the easiest to pen. Good enough. And I just shoot people while they're reloading because that's what this tank is kind of designed to do. Or looking away, like this guy's looking away so I can put a shot into him. And then we want to keep pushing forwards. Like, I don't know why these guys are scared of... Like, such few tanks. And we should just focus on the one-shots in this. Brilliant. I'm gonna take a hit here. That's fine. And the 257, I wish, would be more aggressive in this type of situation. I might just go push into... We can't push out of this. We just have to play it safe for now. We're under no pressure, right? Like, we want to keep pushing forwards, but because the 44 is making this play, he's gonna help us win this side. That's gonna be really bloody useful. And you'll notice the 705 is, like, focusing us? I don't know what he's doing. He's refusing to shoot the 257 on his side, so there is that. But uh, I feel like this guy was XDM focusing, just holding his shot for ages or something. I'm going to go for the kill here because I want the Type 4 to be shooting at someone who's a threat. And um, we're going to drive forwards, try to flank this guy, maybe avoid taking a hit here. And that's going to allow us to go back to base. And then we're going to have to defend against that 9-0 uh, push because... Obviously, that's what we're going to have to deal with. Now, the brilliant, like, the best position on the map right now would be the middle. How much HP is the 44? The the 44 has enough HP for me to YOLO him and feel safe about it. But the thing is, I don't know if they have... Are all, their, are all the enemy lit? It looks like it. Okay, we're going to try this. They're actually, they've actually got three on cap, so I need to be more aggressive. We're going to focus down whoever we can. Just get kills easily if possible. Good enough. And then we're going to push in because I don't want this 44 shoot. Like, I'm going to take the risk that the 44 shoots me in the side. He probably will try. But I need to reset because the Amil is obviously behind that rock there. The already just killed our 5120, so I don't have support anymore. And from here, you'll see I am able to get resets. So that's useful, right? Because that buys us some time. Hopefully someone else can get a reset on the STRV or whatever. If this guy's looking away, I can just shoot at him. I'm actually shooting full gold right here. I didn't intend to do that. But the thing is, this game's kind of close. So I'm going to have to save my gold for really the WZ probably. But that's about it. This guy's going to be able to pen me. There we go. We got the resets. So now we have time. In a situation like this, I would almost be inclined to just push out this 44. Be or, do we have already? No, we don't. Hmm. Does the T10 have shots? It doesn't look like it. So we're just going to... The Emil is obviously off cap. It's the SDRV who's still on cap. So don't snapshot me, please. <laughs> we just kind of have to keep putting shots out. If we can kill these two players, we'll win the game, in my opinion. This guy's camping me. Okay, I don't want to be here because I'm anxious about artillery clicking me. Now, the fact that this 44 is making this play and not dead is very surprising. The way I'd like to deal with this is just by YOLOing this T44. Because he's going to be... Oh, good thing I didn't flip right there. Brilliant, the 44 is dead. Okay, so now the risk is that this WZ is on this thing right here because he would he could shoot at me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into the mid and that's going to allow me to safely put shots into this STRV and the Emil and so on. And so, because hopefully the WZ won't have shots on me from here. This guy probably sees me. I like how he just puts his side to me despite the fact that there's a type in front of him. Emil just killed the T10. That blows. That really sucks. I'm probably unspotted at this point, and now these guys are in a crossfire, and hopefully I need to prepare for that 1390 to YOLO me, actually. So I need to kill this guy as quickly as possible because I want to get near my Type 4 in case the 1390 YOLOs me. I didn't think I was lit because I didn't see my Sixth Sense go off. Can I kill the Emil? I'm so worried about this 1390 YOLOing me, man. <laughs> I'm so pissed at the Type 5. I don't know why the Type 5 couldn't have been more aggressive against the Tier 8 TD. And I'm also surprised I got spotted there. Am I just permalit in this location? Huh. <laughs> if you've ever wanted me to, to see me make a mistake, there you go. Um. The question is, was I permalit by staying there? 
who could have permalit me? Because the SDRV hit that shot, right? Either I just backed up too quickly or what, but I, like, I wish this Type 4... I don't know. I'll put this up on YouTube, because I kind of like showing videos like that, because it shows. Like, I didn't even realize I was still spotted. When I poked on the STRV initially, so when I was here, and I poked on the STRV and he shot me, I thought I was unspotted. And then I backed off. It could be that the 1390 was permalighting me. I kind of doubt it, though, because I don't know where he would be doing that from. Um... But Jesus, man, how did the STRV spot me? I'm going to go watch that in a replay. And first, we'll look at the end plates, though, because that was 3,800 damage for 468 spotting. So, like, considering Abbey is, like, the corridor map of corridor maps, that was not a bad game. So that was 60,000 credits, 2,300 2, XP. Top on the team for damage, second place on XP. Type 4 Heavy did an outstanding job with 3,300 damage. I'm going to go watch that in a replay. We're going to see exactly why that happened. All right, so this is the point in time where I went from the cap circle, like I just made this play. I imagine you're seeing it right now, like you're seeing it cut. I just made this play. So what I've done is I've opened up the angles. I'm taking a shot at this STRV. Now I got spotted as I got here. So there is a gap. It could be this gap in the bushes where the STRV spotted me, or it could be someone else spotting me, or it could have spotted me before I got behind these bushes. We'll see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to poke. Assuming he's not looking at me, but he is looking at me because the type five, the type four, and the object two five seven aren't challenging the STRV. So obviously, the right play for them to make right now would be to go shoot at the STRV, considering he's not looking at them. That's not what happens though. So he is looking at me, and he doesn't die for it. I put a shot into him. He tracks me. So what's going to happen here is we lose the T ten to the Emil. The M forty kills the object two five seven. I poke back. I put a shot into this guy. And I imagine he respotted me there. So I just got safe. It's at 26 seconds. And he... Okay, we're gonna... What I'm gonna try to do is I want to time this. Because I put a shot into him. We're now at 20 seconds. And I want to see if... That was a stupid poke. <laughs> I don't know why. I was getting frustrated at this point. I didn't know why the Type 4 wasn't... I was being such a distraction and the Type 4 wasn't killing him. But what happens here is I put a shot into him. Okay, that I got safe at about 10 seconds. Generally, it takes you about 10 seconds to get unspotted. So I wanted to see if I backed up... No, it wasn't even close. Jesus Christ, I was just bad. Ha! Okay, that's interesting. I just drove into the open. That's pretty embarrassing. And of course, like, it's my fault because I drove into the open, but I was worried that the 1390 would be behind me. And in a sense, I was right. And of course, the second I die, finally, the Type 4 drives up and gets the kill. That's just the way it is, though. Like, expecting Unicum team play from teammates is... It's gonna get you killed. I was getting frustrated that, the, that my teammates weren't shooting the enemies, though, though. So, um... Yeah, that's the answer, actually. I thought I was unlit. Like, I couldn't understand <laughs> why I was spotted. Needless to say, the better play would have been to be in the, the monastery or whatever it's called. If I was up here doing resets, I would have been safe and it would have been a better angle. So, um, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I'll put this up here anyways because a lot of people say, oh, how do you complete your carries? Well, you know, the way to get better at them is to do exactly what I did. It's like... You make a mistake, and because you're in the moment, you can't always see exactly what your mistake was. So if you can identify a mistake, and then, like, let's pretend you get a result that you don't want. Like, let's pretend you die or whatever right off the bat. What you, like, the way I did. And you don't know why. Because you think that when you're in the moment, time flies a lot faster, right? So it, three seconds feels like 10 seconds. So I backed up thinking I was unspotted, but that wasn't the case. What you do is you go and watch a replay or the replay where you made the mistake and then try to figure out the cause. So next time in a, I'm in a situation like this, I'm, you know, I'm going to try to implement a habit or something just to make sure I count to 10, literally count to 10 before I back up into safety, because that could have won us the game right there. I just threw the game. So, um, you know, there's, there's a prime example of me making a mistake and how I remedy it. That's how I got to wherever whatever position that i am on the server i think it's like 80th place in north america you know that's that's how you get there you you do this process you make mistakes and then you try to figure out what, what made them wrong and then in the next time you're in a situation like this you remember the solution to the mistake that you found and try to implement that so you know it happens on to the next um but uh yeah i'm gonna call the video here hope it was informative <laughs> i've lost my voice by this point in time <laughs> being sick sucks man anyways i'll see you later bye for now